So what about sunscreen around the eye area? Should we use it? If yes, every day. What about makeup on top of it? Does it make you cry? Have you tried? It stings your eyes. But can you do anti-aging around the eye area without a proper sun protection? Let's talk. Mm. Oh. Hi there, skincare people, Custodio here again, every Friday here on YouTube, also more and more on Instagram, at the H Traveler, asking the question, what is that skin wanted before marketing got in the way? So I really hope, if it's your first time, that you find some interesting content always about skincare here on Fridays, on Instagram, a little bit more personal and a bit more mixed, but also skincare content always. That's my life. That's what I've done for the past 30 years. I've always worked in the skincare industry in various different jobs. The last 15 years working more with R&D in product development and creative product development. And today we are talking about a topic which maybe you say finally someone is talking about this. It's not so much talked about. What about sun protection now that there is such an awareness about the importance and that's a great thing. That's a great thing that the beauty community managed to do which is to educate uh, and create all this awareness how important it is SPF but if you see closer and I like being a voice from inside the industry to allow critical thinking and to shake up things sometimes do you realize that most skincare brands they go soft pause very silent very discreet and they never even talk about sun protection around the eyes most brands provide no whatsoever sun protection for the eyes and there is a reason, and the reason is that not only developing SPFs are one of the most complicated categories in skincare. You've seen probably that lately mostly Korean brands have been uh, having trouble uh, because of quantification of their SPF. So when double tested, triple tested, a lot of those SPF values don't seem to stand. If you're interested in these topics, I did. You can find the link here, a video just about uh, the Crave Beauty scandal uh, with their uh, SPF. 50 just because in the channel I have endorsed and talked about so many times that product that I liked very much and I still like it as a product just that of course the question mark about what SPF is it in the end but um, when it comes to eye care because you know that products to be used around the eye area they need also to pass ophthalmologically tests so not only developing SPF products it's one of the most challenging from formulation stabilization uh, also the amount of tests needed uh, specific to that category and when you add up ophthalmologically testing you make arguably the most complicated product in the whole cosmetic industry. So this is the reason, honest reason, that most brands don't bother and they don't even try to go there. You also need a certain expertise in terms of the R&D that you have behind developing some such product. Most of the most effective skincare filters, and here it doesn't really matter much if they are chemical, if they are physical, because they all carry their own different issues. So if we think about the physical, mineral, uh, inorganic, whatever you want to call them, so all those uh, zinc oxides, titanium dioxides, um, they are micronized, but they are, even if very well micronized, in the end they are minerals, they are physical, so they are a bit more akin to sand. So you can already guess that that's not something you want to penetrate in the eyes. When it comes to the chemicals, well, most of them are irritating to the eyes. That's those who make you stink. Uh, the physical will not make you stink, but it can be a physical hazard as well for the eyes. So in the end, when formulating a product specific for the eyes with SPF, you need to make sure that there is a lot of stability in the dispersion of the filter, but also a lot of uh, no migration, like a field which holds those sun protections because typically not only you have a lot of movement but you tend to touch your eyes throughout the day even without realizing and that's when you can get in trouble with your sun protection so most brands what do they do they maximum will integrate 
a little bit of a sun protection phase in their eye cream. That's why you have a few products, but even those not too many, but a few products which have SPF 10, SPF 15, eventually SPF 20. I will ignore all of those. I mean, some of them are great products, don't take me wrong, but I'm just here with the lenses of the sun protection for eyes. So for me, SPF 15, it's not a valid sun protection thinking anti-aging and prevention of the visible signs of aging. That's why nothing of these really makes sense because 90% of the signs, visible signs of aging are actually due to UV stress and to UV related problems in the skin. So what sense does it make that uh, such a fragile area where we have the onset of the first signs of aging, it's exactly the area where there is normally no sun protection whatsoever. So I'm ignoring those lower percentages. And really what I want here is to say that an SPF 30 and SPF 50, which is what we should aim for all over our face uh, during uh, daytime, it's something which is possible to achieve for the eye area, but it cannot be part of an eye cream. And this is very interesting because you want penetration of a lot of good ingredients and technologies in your eye cream. If your eye cream contains ceramides, uh, peptides, hyaluronic acid, collagen, um, it contains eventually retinol, it can contain so many beautiful ingredients, you want them to penetrate, but you don't want your sun filter to penetrate. That's why it's not possible to do a proper eye cream in the true sense with all those technologies and an SPF 30 or an SPF 50. So what you have to do is to create, but that's much more logical, a veil, a film which is applied on top of your specific eye cream or your serum, your moisturizer, and that product is only formulated to be that SPF 30 or 50 just for the eye area. That's what makes sense because that's also what you can stabilize from a texture point of view, from a, a sweat, water resistance point of view, etc. to make sure that you really have a film that stays where you have placed it. Loud and clear, if that's the case, if you are happy with applying your uh, generic SPF that you use for the whole face, also to your eye area, and it works well, you didn't hear from my mouth, I'm not fear-mongering that you have to buy a specific eye care product specific SPF. So what I'm saying is in case that generic product fails around your eyes because it makes you cry, because it cakes, because it doesn't marry well with your makeup, then there is a better way. And I'm here for those exciting better ways for people who believe in skincare and they want the best results. They don't want to feel bad, they want to feel good. From my side at Swiss Line, we worked uh, quite hard on this little guy, the Brightening Eye Veil SPF. SPF 50 PA++. So this is the real deal. It's, as the name says, it's a veil just to be used on top of your normal eye care. This is not meant to be used alone, replacing. So even if it's the same moisturizer you use for face that you extend for eyes, you have to apply that skincare before because these will set on top of that moisturizer beautifully. Here, what you really wanted to do is to have a veil which is guaranteed, ophthalmologically tested, to stay on the skin surface. And I think you should do good for your skincare regimen. So whatever you are doing, uh, I personally always add a specific SPF to the eye area, just because I know it's much more gentle, it works better, it lasts an eternity. Is it only my Swiss line? No, it's not. So this is SPF 50 PA++, as I said. You also have from SkinCeuticals just mineral um, inorganic uh, protection. You have both 30 and 50. Uh, I think they still have the 30. Lately, I've seen more the 50. I've tried it. Uh, I believe in this case, I'm not being biased. This, and if you see the channel, you see that very seldom I'm too biased. But here I have to say that I prefer this texture because the skin cuticles left a bit more of a white cast. It's also 100% mineral. Here we went a mixed half mineral, half organic chemical sun protection. But of course, those filters which are more ophthalmologically safe, otherwise we would not pass the ophthalmologically tests and quantify the SPF as we did. 
uh, Kiehl's also sells a very nice mineral SPF 30, which I've tried as well. That's also another eventually good option for you. Supergoop, their uh, iBright SPF 40, very similar optical, the color element, and those elements which uh, also make a bit of a brightening uh, makeup, no makeup type of effect. And to close it, also the makeup topic, which is one of the questions we referred. These products, just because being formulated to have that firm film on the skin surface, which is not migrating, which is not penetrating easily into the eyes, uh, normally they serve as a much better makeup base. So while you have a hard time to apply eye makeup on top of a generic uh, sun lotion if you spread that also to your eye areas you will have an easier life because they work more as a concealer or as a eyeshadow base and there is a matte finish which then your makeup uh, will land much easier so the message of this uh, video was mostly to differentiate a the idea of a sun protection which is not well tolerated or is well tolerated is just a tentative and trial and error if you pass the error you are good to go so you don't need anything specific if you've been stumbling and you've been a bit uh, not having a very happy life in that direction then you should try and also not to ask you to buy anything then I give you something for free because I'm a nice guy so leave comment below if you tried SPF for the eyes if you have problems, if it makes you cry or any other thing in life that makes you cry that you want to share and maybe I will give you in the end so the most surprising comment underneath. In two weeks I'll communicate who is the winner to get one of these uh, SPF 50 for free. Okay, so I think that's not a bad deal. I say goodbye and as in every video I say and that's so true for SPF, say no to boring skincare because some SPFs are boring and we need intelligent SPFs. Ciao! With SPF, without SPF, you should subscribe, click like, follow the channel. It's for your own good.